Hi guys, tablenews.com and I'm here with the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 Lite. This is the affordable tablet from uh, Samsung. And this model was announced in January. We're dealing with a budget tablet from Samsung that was launched in stores in February, so it's pretty fresh. And the price tag here is $159.99, so basically $160 for a 7-inch tablet with a big brand, Samsung. This is a 7-inch affordable slate and now we're going to review it starting with the design. The thickness is 9.7 mm and the weight is 310 grams. It's reasonably light but pretty bulky as you can see, it's pretty thick. We have a leather imitation at the back, that's the texture. It gives you pretty good grip and this model is very easy to hold with one hand. So if you plan on doing some e-reading and flipping to pages like this, you're going to have an easy time of doing that. Okay. The model has big bezels, as you can see, it's not very aesthetically pleasing, but you get your typical Samsung design, only with a bigger bezel. What I can say is that this model seems to be pretty resilient, I'm guessing it could take a drop on the floor, but only one. It's also taller and wider than the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 7.0, the inspiration for this model, which is the Tab 3 Lite. It's also a bit thinner than the Tab 3 7.0, so that's a compliment. Okay, below the screen we can find the physical home button, the back button and the menu button both capacitive, but this one remains physical, a trademark for Samsung. On the side we have volume button and on-off button that are too well incorporated into the design and they're pretty hard to feel with your finger and press, they don't have a very good feedback. And at the top we find the audio jack and the USB port. On the left side we find a little lid that hides the micro SD card slot and finally we move on to the back where we find the camera and the speaker next to it obviously the logo is also here this model is what I would call comfortable enough and the design is okay for the price but not outstanding okay moving further to the hardware we find a TFT LCD screen a 7 incher with a resolution of 1024 over 600 pixels and a density of 170 ppi it also shows uh, 16 million colors and inside we get a dual core CPU which is a Cortex A9 1.2 GHz. The identity of the CPU is a Marvel PXA986. The GPU is a Vivante GC1000 and the microSD card slot on this model can take up to 32GB of extra storage. Internally we have 8GB of storage and the RAM is 1GB. In case you're wondering. On the connectivity side we get uh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi Direct, Bluetooth 4.0, the cam you saw at the back is a 2 megapixel unit and other specs include an accelerometer, GPS and finally the battery available on this model is a lithium-ion 3600 mAh unit. Now as far as the battery is concerned I have here a bunch of samples to show you and I'm talking about screenshots so let's check them out here we are the screenshots and those are related to the battery. Our usual test involves playing back an HD video from start to finish and looping it with brightness of 50% and Wi-Fi on and here's what we achieved 7 hours and 51 minutes on battery with a continuous playback on no other special option just Wi-Fi on and brightness at 50% so the result is pretty good as I said it's 7 hours and 51 minutes I say we're doing pretty fine and the charging time is a bit disappointing here it takes 4 hours and 40 minutes to charge this battery fully which is a bit of a letdown just a small, com small comparison if this model gets 7 hours and 51 minutes of playback well the Nexus 7 2013 got only 7 hours so we're 51 minutes better than that too bad for the charging that almost 5 hours of course you can also do a bit of power saving got some special options in that regard this is the battery area where it shows you the usage of the device and this is the power saving area with a special CPU power saving mode and a screen power saving mode with a low power level for the screen and limiting of the maximum CPU performance overall good battery life but very long charging time okay on the audio side I'm going to turn up the volume and you can either play music with a play music application or you can resort to the music app that Samsung bundles let's try the song uh, opening night
the speaker is right here. Okay, so let's draw some conclusions. We get a clear sound, a reasonably good volume, but the bass is pretty weak. This is the Samsung Music app, which means we get a bunch of very useful options. Like these settings right here, we get Sound Alive, which is basically the equalizer of this device with a bunch of predefined options and a huge variation of customizations. You can play with a lot of presets and a lot of custom options here, which is a very good thing for such a cheap tablet. There is also play speed and smart volume that will automatically adjust each track's volume to an equal level. We also have a lyrics option and that's pretty much it, plus the organization of the music on the device, plus you can also stream your audio content to other devices. Overall, as I said, clear sound, high volume, weak bass, but it does the trick, you can listen to music with no hassle and on the headphones it's actually a bit better. It also supports DLNA, so overall the speaker is okay and the audio is okay. And now we proceed to the video. I'm going to use the standard video app on the device and play the sample video we always play on our test devices. Let's start from the beginning. I have to remind you this is a TFT screen a 7 incher, resolution is 1024 over 600 pixels, 170 ppi, it has poor contrast, bad viewing angles, you can basically see nothing once you turn the device, both horizontally and vertically. The colors seem bleached, if I can say it that way, and the brightness could have been bigger, you'll find yourself constantly searching if you can actually increase the brightness a bit, and not exactly increase it, but make it more efficient i feel that the white hue is good but the screen could have been whiter without decreasing the blacks if you know what i mean and now i'm going to have to go to the gallery and show you some results from our microscope this is what the pixels look like under the microscope we're dealing with rgb stripe pixels and we also use the special lux meter to measure the brightness of the device 265 lux units on paper it's okay, it's very close to the Galaxy S4 and Galaxy S4 mini if you really want a comparison of brightness, but the actual usage of the device will tell you that it may need just a little bit more brightness. Also the blacks are not deep and overall this is a pretty weak screen, this is an aspect that was sacrificed for the sake of a lower price. And uh, as far as the video player goes, here we are, got a bunch of nice features which you were probably expecting. One of them is pop-up play, believe it or not, even on this low-end device, we have pop-up play. So you can do your activities while watching the video. And a bunch of settings. A mini controller, brightness, capture, play speed, sound alive, subtitles and tag body. So I have to say that the video player experience is pretty good. We also have a bunch of codecs available here. The most common ones are supported, so that's good news for the video files among you. But overall, the screen is a bit underwhelming and it was sacrificed by Samsung in order to decrease the price. In the settings area, we find some special settings for the screen. Wallpaper notification panel, multi-window that will be addressed later, brightness, screen timeout, font style and an option to increase legibility. This one enhances the clarity of the text and ma actually makes the reading easier. So if you're into e-reading and find the screen to be bothering your vision, this option may actually rid you of the problems. Okay, had enough with the video, time for the camera. And in order to test the camera, we have this little castle right here. And let's see if the Galaxy Tab 3 Lite is the king of the castle or not. Okay, here we go, setting it up, turning it to pictures mode, taking a quick pic. It doesn't seem to focus. From what I know, this camera should have autofocus, but not touch focus. Okay, here we go. Not the fastest camera in the world, but also not very shabby for a 2 megapixel shooter, as far as the speed is concerned. And this is the picture I've just taken. Obviously, a lot of noise, but once again, 2 megapixel camera, so you should decrease your expectation. Okay, so among the options available here, 
we have uh, shooting mode, single shot, panorama, share shot, uh, body photo share and smile shot, a timer, a bunch of effects that you can play with, black and white, sepia and negative, exposure values, white balance and a huge amount of settings actually, GPS tag, effects again, scene modes, a few of them, quite a bunch of them actually, very nice, timer, the maximum resolution of a shot, white balance, metering guidelines, contextual file name, this one is pretty cool, you can actually turn on the GPS and assign a location based name to each picture and finally image quality, this one is better associated with video capture rather than photo capture. Ok, let's also check out the video area, pretty much the same options including a normal recording or limit for email, GPS tagging, timer, resolution as you can see it's not even HD and finally video quality so those are all the options we have here and as I said the quality is underwhelming but at least we have a huge amount of options available ok now we're done with the camera let's check out the behavior of the device in a gaming process ok so we decided to play a game on it a modern game Riptai GP2 for 15 minutes and the temperature achieved as shown by the thermometer 45 degrees celsius which is huge for this device and the device tends to get overheated especially in the back area ok now to check out the web browser and the browsing speed this is the standard browser I'm guessing that the chrome experience would have been better but we'll have to do with the standard one by the way pretty comfy keyboard I have to say and with a numeric row that's welcome ok let's find our website tabletnews.com here we go the browser speed is actually reasonable it's what I would call reasonable not the fastest in the world but also not the slowest this is our website in portrait and this is it in landscape reasonably fast scrolling and this is where you actually see what the problem with the screen is there is a slight whitish hue on top of the screen and there's that feeling that you want more brightness but you cannot get more without actually killing the black levels anyway the way browsing is nice the speed was actually decent and we proceed to an aspect we like very much the benchmarks I have decided to compare the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 Lite with two lower end tablets from the same category I compared it to the Allview Speed City which is a tablet that I tested exactly one year ago and the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 Standard Edition, the 7 inch standard model, to see how it has evolved. Ok, so screenshots time. This is Quadrant. Here we scored 3408 points. We got beaten by the Allview Speed City, which by the way is also a 7 inch tablet but with a lower resolution. The Allview Speed City got 4079 points, got beaten by that one, and also got beaten by the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 7.0 Standard by about 300 points. We proceed to Antutu, where we scored 11,000 points and 474. We beat the Old Speed City by 1,000 points, and uh, we also beat the Galaxy Tab 3 7.0 standard by about 1,000 points. Next up, Nanomark 2, 48.8 frames per second. We beat the Old Speed City by 2 frames per second, got beaten by the Tab 3 standard by about 3 frames per second. Velamo is up next. In the HTML5 test, we achieved 1502 points. We beat both rival models. The first, the old USB City by 300 points, and the second, the Galaxy Tab 3 standard by uh, 60 points. So, not very much difference. Okay, we skip ahead straight to the 3D Mark. Very low score, 2576 points. And we actually beat the Tab 3 7.0 standard, which is good. We beat it by 400 points. Finally, browser mark. 2.0, 1471, very low score compared to other models out there, but good score compared to Orvis Speed City, it's more than double its amount. Overall, the performance is pretty good, I would have to say in benchmarks, it's very close to the Galaxy Tab 3 7.0 standard, it actually beats it in some tests, and compared to a tablet that's on par with the price and the specs, this one is a little bit better, but keep in mind that the Orvis Speed City is one year old, and it's priced at about half the amount of this model. Ok, um, the head device doesn't stand out to the benchmarks, I can't say it blows away competition, it's about on the same level, so in the benchmark area we're not impressed, 
and if you're wondering about a regular use performance as you can see it doesn't have lag and after using it for a bunch of hours you'll find what I like to call the usual lag of a normal Android device so in the standard limit of a device decency you can get a bit of lag on it the good news is that it runs new games I played Riptide GP2 on it, I played Smash Cups Hit on it Mini Ninjas and a bunch of other games and they ran just fine let's check out the notification area here you can find all the shortcuts you need Wi-Fi GPS sound Bluetooth blocking mode power saving multi window and airplane mode slider for the brightness and let's talk software just a little bit about device we're running Android 4.2.2 with TouchWiz and also in the settings area you can find a feature called blocking mode when you turn it on the notification for the selected features will be turned off like alarms and all sorts of other annoying notifications if you want to sleep and be at peace this is what you need there's another thing we overlooked here in the display area there's the option called multi-window this one you know from the Galaxy Note and Galaxy S devices we get this little thing right here we multitask we trigger an app like this we're in the browser right now and then we use these maps for example to divide the screen into halves so you can look something up on the map and at the same time browse the web obviously there is a bit of lag this is a very CPU intensive activity but it's working pretty decently on this device you can also trigger the music app at the same time with the internet browser or the email and whatever else you want all you have to do to trigger that special area is keep the back button pressed to hide it press the same thing and to quit using that you can either go to the display area and press this or turn it off or on straight from the notification area okay and now we go into the section of the review simply called apps I'm talking about pre-installed apps here those include the famous S planner is basically a calendar on steroids with a bunch of options here you can add an event with a lot of details as you can see time zone all day location description participants you can also sync your account from the clouds show uh, events by the month by the week so a calendar on steroids as I was saying there's also S voice read the news It takes a while to get it started. Okay, that voice is annoying and it's much more laggy than Siri, but it will have to do the trick if you're lazy and you want it to read the news for it or execute other commands. Then we got the app called Memo. Bunch of lag you just saw here. Of course, you can take a quick memo here, nothing fancy. Don't expect a rival for S Note. You don't actually have the options for picture taking and video attachment or GPS attachment, so it's a regular memo app. And uh, let's see what else we got here. We got a help feature. So if you want to know how to use a device, this is where you go to. We got Gmail, Google Plus, Photos, Hangouts, Chrome, Play Store, obviously, YouTube, Play Music, and Google Maps available right here. And actually moving pretty decently on this dual core Marvel CPU device. Marvel has nothing to do with the comic books, just the name. And let's try to get located. Reasonably fast, I would say. And we proceed even further. Of course, we also have Flipboard pre installed here. Let me find it. Here it is. We also have Play Newsstand. A bunch of areas that you may be interested in, like design. You can also integrate Twitter and Facebook. but you probably know Flipboard already um, as I said we also have Drive, Pre-Install, Play Books, Play Newsstand and My Files which is your basically uh, file manager on this device it looks basic and it has basic features and then we get to the productivity area where Polaris Office 5 will allow you to open up um, Excel files, doc files and PowerPoint presentations perhaps even PDFs, I'm not sure then there's Samsung Link allowing you to store some content in the cloud and play it on your devices manage stuff remotely between the uh, laptop and tablet and phone okay and let's see what else obviously the settings world clock internet and finally samsung apps which is the samsung app store offered on this device
a bit of lag here as well. 99% of these things you can find here, content and such, can be found in the Play Store, so not much to brag about in this area. Okay, we got to the end of the review, it's time to draw some conclusions. The pros and cons, we'll start with the pros. The pros include a good grip, good battery, uh, above 7 hours of video playback, clear audio and pretty loud volume, lots of camera options, which is always good. That multitasking window was actually pretty decent, speaking of which, you can also do multitasking like this, obviously. Okay, also on the pro side, the low price, $160 is a low price. The tablet is thin and light, actually just a hair thinner than the Galaxy Tab 3 7.0. It runs new games and it has DLNA, which is always good. On the con side, well, there's the weak screen, obviously, as I mentioned before, very low viewing angles. And uh, the overheating is a bit of a problem. It takes almost 5 hours to charge the battery, which is yet another problem of this device. There is no HDMI. It wouldn't have cost Samsung a lot to put HDMI port in here, so maybe they could have. I would prefer to have a front cam here instead of the back cam here if I were to choose. Uh, the buttons don't have good feedback, those on this side. And uh, local Eastern European brand slates offer more for the same price. I can name you a few names like Evolio, Allview and other Romanian companies will offer more for the same price. Let's give it some grades. So for design we give it an 8. For hardware a 7.7 .7, and for the operating system and user interface an 8.5 out of 10. And that's maybe because the majority of the apps bundled here are useless aside from the Google ones. And we're not even running the latest version of Android. The final grade is 8.06 but since the price is so big compared to the uh, white box makers and the other local makers, the grade drops to 7.75 out of 10. Once this product reaches $100 or even $120, the grade will go up, but for now 7.75 out of 10. For the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 Lite, the main problem is the weak screen, as I said earlier. This is tabletnews.com, hope you enjoyed the review, bye bye.